Speak into the mic. Is it live already? Oh, shit. oh yeah, I'd like to remind you that the stream is a little delayed, so don't uh, mind the screen, don't mind the uh, video. Okay. Just keep not talking naturally. Talk yeah. naturally. Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Okay. Take 10 second delay. So maybe What's up, everyone? Uh, okay. Hello, grade 11. What's up? What's up, y'all? Welcome to which one percent? Welcome to violence. I'm Buhai, I weather weather long. Okay, so we're gonna start. Um, so our lesson. Our lesson is about post rot and strategies. So uh here here is our slides. We're gonna do our slides first. Uh starting with file decor, it'll be the first to present. Take it away. So, first, how are you guys? <laughs> so, post writing strategies is a general process of going through your whole draft from start to end and on or clarifying your writing subjects meaning. So, you might wonder why is this important? You know, post writing strategies helps us finalize our finished uh, draft, basically. Without this, our draft might come out messy or it might come out disorganized. With this, uh, we br with this lesson basically brings about like how can we, what are the process of post writing and how can we apply it to our writing itself. Okay, so let's start. So, there's basically uh, two uh, types of post writing strategies. First one is revision. Revision is a general process of going back through your whole draft from start to end and improving or clarifying your writing subject meaning. Editing, on the other hand, is the more meticulous process of clarifying meaning by revising each word and line of your draft. So you might wonder, what is the difference between revision and editing? Okay, so here. Revision involves making major changes to a document's content, structure, or organization. Revision is basically going through the whole draft. It's basically the generalization of it. You're trying to mix and match the foundations and the contents of it. While editing, on the other hand, involves making sentence level changes. So this means editing is in a more specific, more concise, uh, some more concise action, per se. Now, going on to the next topic. Steps in revising your draft by me. So the first step into revising our draft is taking a bird's eye view on our draft to reread it as a whole. So why is this important? You see, sometimes we get too focused on certain parts of our draft that we forget how that we forget the organization of the whole process. This can make it disorganized, and this can lead to some few writing problems. As below, as you guys can see below here, there are some bullet points. Uh, this is how this is basically like the important uh, process of how we can uh, how we can implement bird's eye view on our draft. So the first one is check if you have attained your writing purpose to enlighten, to to entertain, or to persuade. So basically, this means like check if your whole draft is basically uh, is basically organized, right? It's check if it's uh, sending a clear message, because Without a clear message, it might be, I like I said again, it might be disorganized. So I could I could get things could really get messy. You guys know what I'm saying? Yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. So the second bullet point is check if you have used the language and tone that best serve your writing purpose. So uh right, uh, you guys know context, right? So basically the second bullet means like 
check if you have the right context and the right uh, specifications for your uh, draft. Like, it would be weird, right, if you were to write a novel about horror, then out of nowhere, the tone of the draft you are writing currently would become comedic. That would be like, that would be like if Andrew were to like punch Moises and like Moises would like go back to like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he would like, he would get knocked down. Like it's crazy, you know? <laughs> like, no, I, I like Andrew. Done. So the second step, reviewing your draft portion by portion and adding in filtering and reorganizing content according to form and flow. So the first step, right? We took a bird's eye view. We basically took it as a general process. Now the second steps, we might have to be a bit more precise. See, reviewing your graph portion by portion and adding in our filtering and reorganizing content. So this basically means that we should like try to finalize our draft. We should mm, check the if we have uh, unnecessary details, right? So here, there's four bullet points. So the first one would be the beginning should hook the reader and the ending should leave a lasting impression on the reader. So that's what it says, you know? Without the, without a good introduction, how your reader wouldn't really get the gist of it, right? Like uh, yesterday's topic, we talked about, what was the topic yesterday? Topic sentence and supporting details, right? Yeah, uh, uh, it basically was talking about how, like, how uh, we should use those uh, processes so that we could book the reader in. Because without a proper introduction, the reader wouldn't really be interested in your topic as a whole. Like, they don't, like, a first, uh, first impressions leave a lot of a story in your draft. So the second form is form is important in the draft, e.g. descriptive essay, expository essay, and etc. So this basically means that you have to know what you are writing. Like it cannot just be uh, one, like it cannot just be all over the place, right? Because if it's all over the place, then it would, be get, it would get really messy. See, uh, I have a lot of emphasis on this organized and messy because uh, post writing strategies involve, it's like trying to clear up your uh, draft. Draft in this context is basically a sketch, right? When we draw, we sketch first. And as the as we finish up the drawing, we start to add line art, right? We start to emphasize the lines and the and the sketch because slowly fades away. This is basically draft. Draft is like the what was that word? Uh, is the what's the word? A test. It's basically like a test. Like it's stamp, it's stamp. Yeah, temporary. Draft is temporary. And the third one is the pace of the draft is important, fast enough that the, that it can hold the attention of the reader all throughout, but slow enough that the reader has time to digest all your points. So uh, speed is really important here. Because like if your draft puts a lot, uh, example, if your, if your draft put uh, too much information into one part, the reader might get interested. You have to feed them the information slowly, but just fast enough so that they can also, uh, so that they can also feel like their time is being respected, right? Because some readers, uh, and this is really, uh, this really, you know, it's really common that uh, some stories are like really long and then like that can really leave away some readers. Like for example, uh, if I were to read like a 1,000 page book about uh, a story about a, about a guy's life, right? Like a thousand pages book, a thousand pages book. And, it, and it, you know, it would get me disinterested. Like uh, here, I write TLE, right? In grade 10, TLE. During grade 10, we had like, uh, mom said used to give us our like what? 100 slides. And like, I would like, and when I try to read those slides, I would get really in this interested because of that much slides. Like it, hmm, what's that? Uh, what's uh, no, the opposite of inspire? Oh. Yeah, it discourages you. It's, it's discouraging, right? It feels discouraging. So you have to feed information slowly and surely to the leader, but fast enough that they can respect their time. 
And the fourth and last one is that unnecessary details should be trimmed down while sections that lack detail should be expounded on. So like sometimes in our draft, we tend to like put uh, too much words, right? Uh, sometimes simple and concise is a good way of trying to give in information because clarity is really important in this context because we want our readers to understand what we are writing about. If you put less details on the important stuff and more details on how we present it, it might, sure, if there's like, sure, it could sound good, right? But the information we could get from it is like very trimmed down. It can, it's like very minimal. So it's important to know what you're writing and to know how much information you put in. Now, essay revision, revision checklist. It will be presented by Daniel Jabber T. Segera. All right. So that was uh, Kyle's section. Uh, I hope you guys were able to understand his uh, parts. So let's move on to the essay revision checklist. So what is the essay revision checklist, everyone? All right, chat, I want to hear chat say hi. Uh, any, anyone's in the chat, right? So just so I know. We have people's attention. So this checklist is just here to help you weed out any remaining problems you may have missed out on. So point is, when we're making an essay or when we're, whenever we're making any form of mat writing material, right, there's always going to be something we're missing. Right? Of course, there are a handful of people who usually get it done the first time. But just in case you're one of those people that end up missing out on the small results and you want to fix that, you should probably make use of an essay revision checklist. So what is that exactly? Well, it's a series of questions that you can use to identify whether or not your essay is actually answering most uh, or accomplishing most of the tasks you want it to accomplish, right? Obviously, we all have a goal for when we're making an essay, right? We want to express something. We want to deliver a message, right? That's the whole point of making an essay, to communicate our message. So it's very important for us to get them all right. And part of that is using essay revision checklist. So you can identify whether it really answers the questions uh, that you pose, right? If it really fits it, you know what I mean? So the first question is, do I have a big idea I want to, uh, do I have a big idea I want to express an important message to send out? Do I have an audience who will listen to me? Who is my audience? Obviously, the most important thing, the message is important. What's the whole point of making something if there is no message, right? That's, that's just strange, right? The whole idea of making an essay is to deliver a topic, to answer on something. Hence, it is important to have, uh, to have the big idea being expressed, right? Next is the audience. Audience is obviously very important. Who would read your essay if it's not targeted to anyone? Hence, you need to know your audience and you need to know whether or not this, if you were, if you put yourself in the shoes of an audience or a reader, does it satisfy you or does it make you want to read it, the whole thing, not just parts of it, but the whole thing. Right, I'll speed run it from here, hopefully. What is my purpose for writing? Have I achieved it? So obviously there's a goal, like I previously mentioned, there's a goal when you're writing an essay. So part of that is your purpose for writing. What do you want to accomplish, right? Have I, and have I achieved it? So when you're reading it, when you're reading the essay, ask yourself really, if you were the reader, would you get where the author is coming from, right? Or would you misunderstand something, right? Uh, answering that question would really help in kind of setting the direction of your essay. Because sometimes essays go sideways or even up and down and like it doesn't really have a set point, you know, doesn't have a point A to point B. There's not, there's not that kind of, uh, there's not that kind of relationship, right? So you want it to be clear cut in a way that they understand it. And it's also very formal, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's all fixed, right? It's all there, right? If there's any missing de details, it's all there, right? And there's, uh, if, if there's any or none at all. Anyways, next up is what language and tone do I take in my writing? What is the point of view and voice? Are all these appropriate on the subject with confidence and sufficient knowledge? Now, obviously, 
it's very important to, when you're reading, when you're reading something, obviously you read it in a certain language, in a tone, right? And uh, that could depend on the words that you use, right? Or how you, uh, what kind of diction do you use, right? Are you a little more harsh? Are you beating around the bush? So on and so forth, right? So you need to take into account all of that, right? As well as your point of view and voice. Obviously, when we're making an essay, uh, especially if it's do you agree or disagree, you have to obviously take a point of view. Of course, you can take the neutral stance, but uh, in a way, you have to kind of elaborate your point of views. So it's like, it makes sense. It's not too confusing for the uh, for the reader, right? Are all these appropriate on the subject with confidence and sufficient knowledge? So obviously, like I said, knowing your audience, you also have to know if your audience has enough background knowledge on this to really understand your point of view. If they have little to no context about what you're writing, they won't understand your text at all. So obviously you need to know what kind of audience uh, you're, you're going to write for. And not only that, you need to know, are these things that I'm pointing out, are they common knowledge, right? Uh, do most of my audience know about these, right? Because if they don't, then there's no way they're going to be able to understand it, or at least perfect. Uh, in a, uh, they won't be able to understand it fully, won't be able to grasp the idea. So you have to uh, make sure it's all appropriate and also it, fit. it fits the subject, but also it's something that uh, most viewers or audiences know. Right? Does my draft make a central point? Have I defined the limits of my draft well? So that only is essential information is included. Is the context of my draft established? So like I said, this is more so about the direction of your, uh, of your essay, right? If you have a good direction in your essay, if the way it's structured is good, then most often than not, you have a central point. You have one main clear idea that most people will go back to after they finish reading. So you have to take note of that. Not only that, you need to, as it says, define the limits so that only essential information is included. Do not put random um, words or random information that does nothing to support your claims or your essay for that matter. It would be a waste of space and pages to have things that don't even relate to it uh, be put in the draft, right? And is the context of my draft established? This has to do with the relationship before. If the context is not fully present, then you have to find a way to introduce that context so that they know. Usually you do this in the introductory um, parts of your uh, essay when you have to tell them what exactly are you talking about or what's the history, what's the background, right? When you're doing a research paper, for example, background of the study is very important because it gives kind of, uh, it establishes exactly what you're talking about. It gives all the context the person needs to understand the research and to understand where the research will go from there. What form of writing does my draft take? Is it the best venue for my ideas to be expressed? So obviously, when you know there's different kinds of written papers, right? That you could uh, uh, you could uh, make, right? And uh, all of that matters when you're delivering your ideas, because depending on what kind of writing paper you're using, your idea might be misunderstood or it might be clearly understood. So you have to take into account uh, if this kind of writing paper. If this works, right, is, is, this, is, this, is this what I'm going for or am I, am, I, am I feeling like I'm missing something, right? Does the beginning of my draft draw the reader in? Does it introduce my subject to the reader as well? So introduction. We all know first impressions are very important, right? And that goes as well, the, that applies for writing, right? You have to draw your audience in if you want them to continue reading. If they won't be impressed the first time, what makes what do you think will convince them to go in for the second time, right? So introduction, where you still have the chance you should strike and really spark an interest. That's the whole point of an introduction. Not only is it to uh, oh, not only is it to introduce them to the topic and to help them grasp the to help them grasp the context needed to understand it, but also it draws them in. It pulls them in where they go, you know, I'm interested in reading this. I want to read this. So that's for that question. So that's all the questions on the green part to the left. What about blues? Blue with, with a little bit of white and a, and a few X's. Okay. So 
do my succeeding points support my beginning statements? Does, does each idea connect to the next one? Do all the sections of my draft move my discussions on the subject forward towards the conclusion? So all of this is basically unity. Does it all come up together where in a way it, uh, oh yes, does it all come up together where in such a way it uh, all leads to an ending, right? You have to connect the puzzles together so it makes a clear image. Does the conclusion make the reader think? Does it answer all the reader's questions on my subject? So take in the, re the reader's shoes, right? What do you think they have to, uh, what do you think they have in mind when they're reading it, right? Maybe they have a few questions like, why is it like this? Why is it like that? You want to, as much as possible, answer most, if not all of the questions that readers have on their mind while reading or after they read the whole uh, essay. Is the pace of my draft just right? Is it slow enough so the reader is not left behind by my discussions? Is it fast enough so the reader's interest still stays with me? So I've already said this before, uh, not me, sorry. Uh, Kyle has already elaborated in this before. So you wanna make sure it's not too fast where they won't digest the ideas, but you don't want it to be too slow that they'll get bored of it. Does the draft read smoothly and coherently overall? So this just works grammatically. Obviously, it's gonna be a bunch of gibberish if you're gonna read something that isn't grammatically correct. So you have to double check that. What are the strengths of my draft and how can I make these stand out more? So knowing the strengths of your draft will allow you to kind of have uh, something you want to uh, emphasize on to make it really seem good, like it stands out. And then what are the weaknesses of my draft and how can I improve on these? Obviously, a perfect way to improve on things in general is to look at your weaknesses and to strengthen them, right? So it's really important. It's all a matter of just looking into everything and then seeing what you can uh, make or improve better. So that's all my thing. So oopsies, it's 20 minutes of ah. Hey guys, so now I will be talking about steps in editing your draft. So listen, I want to go through this quick because we're kind of running out of time. So I'll just read and summarize. Editing is a general process of going back through your whole draft from start to end and improving on or clarifying your writing, writing subject meaning. Steps in editing your draft. Editing must be viewed as the final preparations and changes on your draft before it faces your readers. Number one, be concise in your writing and mail ever word count. Never make the mistake of editing your works before revising the content. Make sure the content is clear before you start editing. And lastly, you are required to do multiple rereadings of your draft and editing with each rereading having a different editing in focus from the last so you can spot errors more accurately. So listen, the number one, when they said, make the words one two three four that means make the words count every word that you put into you have to make sure it's clear you have to make sure it doesn't make the the it doesn't have any errors in every part of your essay next never make the mistake of editing your words before revising the content listen First of all, if you're making an essay, if you're making any form of literature, you always have to make sure that your draft makes sense. Like, how are you able to edit something if it doesn't make sense in the first place? Like, what's this? Now, lastly, you are, you are required to do multiple rereadings. So it's so important to do rereadings when it comes to uh, editing because maybe when you're editing your draft you're like wait i want to touch on more with this subject or wait i didn't i didn't put too much description within this subject so then you're like let me add you know so you one plus one it and then you add things to your essay like hello it's important to always edit it and not only that there's something called proofreading and then we will be tackling it the symbols and what it's used for uh with the help of Catherine damasho okay thank you so hello guys, we're going to be going next on proofreading. I'm sure some of you find this familiar because um, Mom Aryan, if you remember, she used to use these proofreadings in our essays or paragraphs. So common proofreading symbols. Writers typically used to use these, note, these to note errors in their drafts by marking them with said symbols. 
Firstly, we have this. The first symbol is like an arrow upwards, right? It's called insert a comma, meaning if you're like missing some commas in the sentences, they will add the symbol below the word. Then we have this, which is apostrophe or single quotation mark, meaning um, if there's like, if you've mistaken a word and you have two quotation marks, they're going to ask you to take one out or add on the quotation mark in the words. Then we have this, an arrow facing upwards again. It's insert something. So basically, if there's something mi missing in your phrase or something missing in your sentence, they're going to add um, an arrow upwards for you to add uh, more words or something to fill in the sentence. Then we have um, two arrows that are going downward. We call this a use double quotation mark. Use double quotation mark, meaning like imagine you're trying to explain a certain title, but you haven't added the quotation marks. They're going to put that sign down in both ends of the word or both ends of the phrase for you to add the quotation marks. Then we have this. I think many of us had this mistake back in junior high school because we don't really use periods. Um, they put a period at the end, meaning you have to use a period to complete the sentence. Uh, it's basic grammar. Then we have um, this, this symbol. It's like a swirl. It is called delete, meaning they want you to disregard or discard this certain word from the sentence. Then we have this. It's like a squiggly line. It's called to transpose elements, meaning you have to switch the word. Imagine um, they want to switch the words from he to the. We have then this, which is close up this space, meaning you're taking up too much space or you accidentally did a double space, meaning you have to delete like a space. It's like um, double space or no space. Then we have a hashtag or what we call a space needed in here. Meaning if we were to accidentally forget to add a space between two words, they're going to put a hashtag in between those two words. Then we have, so second to the last, we have begin a new paragraph. Meaning if your explanation is not fully tackled on, they would put, um, put this sign at the end of the paragraph, asking you to make another paragraph in explaining this certain topic. After this, we have no P, which is basically no paragraph, meaning that you don't need to add another paragraph afterwards. So that is all for common proof reading symbols. Then we have common proof reading abbreviations by, by Kyle. Hello, everyone. I am Bach from the dead. So common proof reading abbreviations. Let's start. AB. AB means faulty abbreviation. As you guys can see from the book, in page uh, 91, we can see an example. An example would be, she had earned a PhD along with her MD. So MD in this context might mean medical degree, right? But it could also be a faulty abbreviation because like, we really don't know what it means. Now, the AGR, agreement problem. Here in the example here, it says the piano as well as the guitar need tuning. The student lost their book. So you see there's like uh, the, it's the sentences doesn't really agree with each other, right? They don't really connect to each other. Now on the third abbreviation, uh, we have a W K. This means awkward expression. The storm had the effect of causing millions of dollars of damage. See, if, if you if you see it, it feels a bit awkward, right? Since there's a lot of off. As you guys can see, the storm. I, I repeat it again, okay? The storm had the effect of causing millions of dollars of damage. See, it feels too repetitive. This is where the abbreviation of A W K goes. Awkward. Okay. Nice. Uh, question from Sir Roman. Is it necessary for an editor to use a proofreading symbol and abbreviations in editing an article? So all of uh, proofreading abbreviations and symbols isn't necessary. However, it does help in, in shortening and trying to uh, 
it, it helps to what do you call this? It helps to shorten and the explanation of why we have we have to prove it, right? Wait, what's that? No? Right. It's not necessary, but however, it it helps in it helps in because it's uh, the thing with common proofreading abbreviations is it's a really uh, since they're symbols and they're usually small, it makes it easier to like. Uh, make adjustments. Yes. You know what I mean? Because it's simple. It's not like you don't have to elaborate on it because it's obvious already depending on the symbols that you see. Right. So you don't have to use a lot of uh, sentence. You don't have to use a long sentence or a long word for to explain the corrections in the drawing. So the fourth uh, example we have is CAP, which is faulty capitalization. Uh, faulty capitalization, as the word says itself, it's when we have a faulty cap like a faulty capital, right? Like example, we spell Philippines with a smaller uh, T. So of course the uh, the editor could put C A P in it, right? So C S comma splice. Uh, comma splice is basically like trying to uh, put the comma, like trying to put where or trying to guide where the comma should be in the sentence. Now for the so for the okay, so for the for the next one we have D I C T faulty abbreviation sorry that's faulty diction uh it's a typo faulty diction so here in a sample of page ninety one due to the fact that we were wondering as to whether it would rain we stayed home so faulty diction fine. So in okay, so this uh, proofreading abbreviations, okay, so I'm going to cut it short, okay, guys, because we have a special surprise for you guys, for those who listen. So uh, this, okay, so as the generalization, proofreading abbreviations and symbols, is it necessary? But it helps uh, in saving time of trying to correct mistakes in a draft. Okay, so... Yeah. What are the advantages of undergoing revision so initially when we make drafts right sometimes the draft might not necessarily be what we envision it to be so going through revision is important because uh in a way it's not really rewriting the whole thing but more so you're making major changes to actually uh amplify the things that you actually want to accomplish in that right if you're only going to edit then it's not going to solve the underlying problem that you have with an essay. So it's uh, important for you to undergo revision sometimes so that uh, in a way you can be able to solve the majority of the problems that you can encounter when making a draft. Because revision focuses more on the general general draft. It doesn't focus on the tiny details. Because if you focus too much on the tiny details, sometimes you can miss out on some uh, major information that uh, you're trying to give to the readers. So here for the surprise uh, again, we will have uh, we will have a wheel, and whoever gets chosen, please come to the lab so that we can perform our game. I just realized who else is missing in this because this is a different. I'm really uh, under. Okay. okay. No, person is missing. Let's spin. I know. Right. We're about to spin now. Hang on. Just give me a second. All right, guys, whoever gets picked, uh, like Kyle and Genial said, come to the cam lab. Cam lab. Cam lab. And the winner for the base from the Gigi, I just added her name. Angelina Lacro, please come to the cam lab. We will have you play a special game for the review of our presentation. Angelina Lacro. Okay. All right. The winner for today's session. Give me a minute while I set up. No, I think it's And then it is me. You are just in So, in this today's mini game, we are here to play Minecraft in our made world. 
Edward Reinhardt. Oh, Edward Reinhardt, na guys. Oh, oh. Best in class. 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 Best Oh, oh, where am I? Uh, Sash. Okay, wait. Uh, guys, guys, guys. Guys, how did you guys do? Okay, what am I supposed to do? guys. All right. Let the game What am I supposed to do, guys? Follow the path. Follow the path. You're lost. Okay, hi, Chad. Welcome to my stream. Today, oh. I'm playing Minecraft, guys. So, new, new map. This is, uh, this is a new, uh, new map. Built by the developers of Minecraft. Okay. Whoa. Look at the effort they made. Okay. Hi! 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 This way. Wait, what's what's the chest? Oh, leave some for the next player. It's like oh, okay, not all. Not all. You have to choose one staff. Hi. Oh, what's that? Let's try to find it. Do I get some stuff? Hi. Got this mouse. I think you only need one. Get, get, do I just get one or all? All? Which door? Okay, guys, let's read it. Chat. Find the button and the key. And then you're gonna go back. Okay. Find the. Ah, chat. So, you go into one room, all right? If you go into one room, you cannot go out. And one of the rooms has the key. So you have to know, you have to choose which one to which. And you have to make sure you make the right decision. If you don't make the right decision, you will leave and someone else will leave. No! No! I'm just, I'm just, baby's on me, baby's on me. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm, 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 guys, chat, stop the other thing. Chat, chat, left or right, come on, left or right, there's another one, oh my god. As the host, I think our professional opinion says that we don't have Yeah, Should I trust the professional opinion? Yeah. <laughs> I see a chest there, and there's no chest in the other side. Well, so. maybe if you explore, can I even go there? Yes, what? Can. I can? So you cannot... Oh, yeah, okay. There's a zombie inside. There's two zombies in there. Okay. Oh, my baby, I'm fighting. Right is right, everyone. Guys, right is right. Put the creeper room. Okay. Right. My dog's telling me to put the creeper room. This is all part of the challenge. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hell no, hell no, hell no, hell no, hell no. Can I take my mind? Try to try. No. Well, well, technically, you can enter the room. I think they can go. Around. Okay. It was only in the friendship place. All right, chat. 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 All right, ch
Bro, bed with me. Bro, bed with me. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. oh I see you. That's amazing. I see you. I, see I can't you. believe it. Oh. I see you. I see you. Oh, bro, bro. Oh, you can use that to open it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it doesn't work on that door. No one so, so you have to go through the other room. You're having to be hard here. Oh. So mama, no matter what. Okay, guys. Okay. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, my God, bro. All right. Is there no critical hit? I know you have to jump. Yeah, I have to jump. No, I did not. I put one. I'll put this much, guys. I think it was. I think it was all types of spots. Oh, oh, it's alive, it's alive. Time not enough. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, if I go beta mode, can I? <laughs> okay, is it game? Oh, yeah, game mode. Okay. Okay. So, let's just pretend I killed everyone. So, there is inside, and then that's. Both writing key. Both yes, writing key. Okay. If you leave with the lever, of course, you go right to there. And there's a chicken there waiting for you. And then after the time says, after the says, drop paper on pink pool. Shout out to Salem and Jasmine. How do you draw them? Is it uh, Q, Q, Q. Q. Oh, yeah. Q. Wow, that's so cool! I know. I okay, know. chop now. Down. This will be. This was supposed to be like a death trap. If you answer wrong, no, no, you cannot go near. Back up, back up. So you cannot see where the trap is and whatever. So basically, we will be asking you a question, and then what okay. the answer you have, you go through. And if you go to the right one, you get to proceed and get okay. the exit. But if you get the wrong one, you die, and someone okay. else will answer for you. Okay, what's the question? So what was the question, please? Um, the abbreviation is right there. Guessing from the first guy. No. I'm not, I'm not. I... Okay. If it's correct, okay, I'm gonna go with this. Okay. Is it right? Okay. Yay! Let's just go. B I C E. Same thing. I'll be reading on. B I C E. Both diction. Due to time means, um, we are unfortunately can't finish this today. No. Gamer. Let's finish it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope you guys like, subscribe, and hit the Pice Gaming. Smash the Pice the Bottom Gaming. What? Pice, Pice the Bottom Gaming. TikTok, Twitter, and uh, Fortune. Subscribe. Fortune. Subscribe. Wow. Give us a Twitch dono. Thank uh, you for the subs, uh, chat.